statewide for uh, managed for 30 bucks per 100 does and our dough quotas are aimed at uh, keeping some of our populations in check with their carrying capacity uh, get into some of the specific discussions on the hunt when we get to there when we get there uh, our junior hunts uh, we went with a 26 percent of the total buck quota this year uh, that was our best guess at the time of what the total laps were going to be uh, so I'll just start right in with the junior uh, resident junior mule deer antlered or antlerless uh, all weapon classes 1107 actual apps were 3755 checked with systems consultants uh, so we came pretty, pretty darn close with our uh, trying to predict how many there were going to be with our recommendations. Uh, I do believe there are some alternative recommendations by the CAPS. Uh, Clark CAB recommends the uh, commission match the number to the youth applications. And then we have some specific ones by individual cabs, specific units. I'll just open up. Okay, any questions? Any public comment? Glenn? No, Brad? Glenn Bunch, Mineral County. Um, the department recommended a reduction from last year from 20 that we had last year down to 15. We'd like to see that go back to uh, 20 in Mineral County as we feel that that's where the, uh, uh, the hunt is headed, is into the youth category. And we'd like to see that go back to what we had last year, back to 20. Okay, thank you. Brad? Brad Johnston, um, we didn't address this specifically at our CAD meeting, so I'm speaking for myself, but uh, 2013 Unit 203 had uh, 30 junior tags. The proposal this year is for 32, and I just note that the 2013 applications totaled 34, so I would like to see, rather than an increase of just two junior tags in Unit 203, to take that up to 35 to 40, because that would hopefully take care of all the applications that unit two or three is a, is a popular junior hunt uh, for kids in Mason Valley and in the surrounding areas and uh, if someone has that as their first choice I think that the, uh, the area can handle it certainly so I think 35 would do it on the safe side maybe 40 on the, the maximum thank you thank you any other public comment Mr. Dixon uh, Paul Dixon Clark County um, Every year that I've been cab chairman, we've always advocated to try to match the number of available tags to the number of youth applications to maximize opportunity for the youth. Realizing that you're always going to have leftover tags because you have youth that don't apply in certain areas. I mean, guys in Clark County, maybe their dad doesn't want to drive them up to the Rubies to go hunting. But if they don't make the first round, there were a lot of second chance tags where her parents have done that, and I know they do that. And I think we should give every opportunity, and I think you've been hearing from the other counties that there are specific areas where you could add up some of that extra to get those youth tags where you could put them in places where if we have the ability to, to, to carry those youth tags and they don't impact the tags in the, uh, in the uh, adult hunt dramatically, I would, I would strongly recommend that. I know you kind of took a percentage, 
What I don't know is that if you start adding these ones and tens to certain areas where we know we have the demand, does that impact the overall availability for, for the other 100 choices in there at those smaller numbers? I don't think it does, but that's why you're the experts from earlier. Thanks. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing now, I'll bring you back to the commission. Commissioner, oh, Commissioner Drew. Cody, can I ask you a question? Maybe you don't know this off the top of your head, but do you know how many uh, UTAGs tags went unsubscribed last year? Maybe what units they're in? I know it's traditionally a unit ten doesn't always. Or area ten, I'm sorry. Ten and seven had over the counter. Yeah, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. I know uh, ten is one of the areas, and I think uh, 051 is another that we generally have uh, left over. Youth tags. Maybe Mr. Shefton could help us out there. He's trying to pull up. Give me a minute. Go ahead and put it. Maybe we have it. We just didn't look at it. So we got it. Yeah, it's on here. No 10. Yeah, it's actually page A5, I believe. That answers my own question. Okay, Commissioner McDevitt, did you have a question? Uh, I was going to ask if uh, what, how many uh, applications were used this year? Do we know how many applications were used this year? 3,755. Just, it looks like the unit groups were area 10 and area 17, or we had uh, filler. That was after first draw, second draw, and then uh, first come, first serve, mm -hmm. which is over the counter. So I think the difference we've got, you guys predicted pretty well, the difference we actually have is 162 between the number of apps and the number that you had recommended. So really, when you look at this, we're pretty close, even though we're not you know, right there tagged per application. So. That one, I'm pretty comfortable with some of the recommendations that were made. Can you scroll down? Area 17 had second draw tags last year. That being said, uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the resident junior mule deer antlered or antlerless longbow arch archery muzzleloader and any legal weapon hunt 1107 as uh, presented by the department with the following changes. Uh, that we increase 
Hunt Unit Group 202, 205 through 208 from 15 to 20. And that we increase Unit 203 from 32 to 40. That's it. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Drew, second by Commissioner Bush. Any further discussion? Commissioner McBeth. Um, yeah. Churchill Cab recommended taking uh, 181 to 184 from 115 to 81. Um, I have those recommendations noted. Uh, they were intentionally left out of my motion, at least for the youth tag. I plan on having some more discussions on the regular hunts. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, signify, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed unanimous. Any legal weapon depredation hunt, eleven oh one. Any questions? Any public comment? Seeing that, I'll bring it back to the board. Move to approve resident builder antler list. Any legal weapon depredation hunt, eleven zero one, as presented by the department. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Wallace, second by Commissioner Drew. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passed unanimous. Okay, moving on to resident mule deer antlerless saying legal weapon, hunt 1181. Okay, any questions from the commission? Any public comments? <coughs> For the record, Trent Ward, Alpha County, Alpha County Cab. On this hunt, we did ask for some changes. 061, 06, through 064, 066 through 068. This is a pretty lengthy discussion. But the department said they wanted to up it because of drought and fire conditions. They wanted to go up to 882. We recommend that it only go up to 800 tags. <clears throat> we, we do know that there are drought conditions out up there. But they did come out with a press release for that area saying that they are at their 30 bucks every 100 bills. Actually, 29 point whatever. That is why we're saying another reason why we're asking that it be brought down. Now, there's that it go to 800. It's because they are they're at their projecting, but we do know that there's drought conditions. So we don't feel that they need to, for the other 82 tags, they really don't need it. In area 101 through 101, 102, 109, we're recommending that it be brought down from 1363 to 1,000. And this area, we're recommending that after talking to Caleb and public comment that they're showing that, saying all these deer are there. They may be, Caleb has said too, that they're on the wrong side of the mountain. They're in landlock. So we can't get the hunters in there anyways. So we're asking that that come back down to a thousand, so that it's more comparable to last year. <clears throat> and that's what we got on that. Okay, Joe. Joe Cream, Persian Cab. On the the 1181 hunt, the department is proposing 
to harvest four percent or a quota of four percent of the total of the doe population out of 103 tags. We at the meeting voted to change that to two percent to drop it to 59. Also on the paperwork, I think you see there that we would even go for the one percent at 29. And this is my backup for that. The population has declined from 3,200 to 2,700 in one year. The um, long-term population in that unit is 2,800. Last year, there was 310 bucks killed, which is a record high for that, for that unit, and 54 does. The county significantly reduced the buck ratio and has reduced competition for forage, feeling that this population has declined enough to warrant reduced doe tags. The survey that was done post season in 13, they classified 805 deer, 32 bucks to 100 does and 34 fawns. Fawn, fawn ratio was very low for the second year. They did spring survey and they classified 718 deer, 22 fawns to 100 adult deer, which was a 21% winter loss. So we think that lowering the doe, the, the doe numbers in that unit would significantly help the population maybe come back up to where it should be. Okay. Any further public comment? Seeing now, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Bliss. I have a, a question for you. Uh, can Area 10 um, have, uh, have you guys, have you gotten like body condition samples of the does and stuff like that? Are they healthy? Are they uh, poor body condition? Actually, in any of the, the units where we've got doe harvest, what, what, do, you, what do you guys have on uh, body condition? Uh, well, we, don't have, we don't have any information for area four, but we do for the rubies uh, for uh, 15 where we've been capturing deer there. Um, I can say that, that 15 is definitely lower body condition than area 10. You know, 10, 10 uh, we, it's variable, um, but overall the deer are heavier, better body condition, just highly productive, <coughs> summer range, uh, winter range is, you know, largely intact. You haven't seen the impacts like you have in 15. Um, but we do see a trend with the population you know, steadily increasing and fawn ratios staying stagnant. Um, so we don't think that there's maybe an immediate problem, but we're trying to head off, you know, an increasing population to minimize the effect of overshooting carrying capacity. Um, you know, 15, it's a lot more about the drought, the range conditions, um, past fires that have not recovered well. Um, and then Similar for area six, where we just have terrible range conditions. Um, we haven't had our we we have got our hands on some animals in area six. Uh, weights we didn't, we didn't collect body conditions on those animals. They actually weren't too bad. Um, and the fawn ratios and things in area six look okay. It's just again um, three three years of fairly mild winters, with combined with the poor range conditions. Um, you know we're looking at a devastating. Die off possibility if we had a hard winter, and so we're trying to hedge that, hedge that off with a quarter recommendation. And, and you think with uh, um, would the 800 still reach your goal? From in area, you're talking about area six, right? Yes. Would would the would the cab? Uh, uh, request of 800 from 82. Would that still get you close to close enough to your your overall goal? Uh, yeah, I believe it would. Okay, thank you, Mr. McBeth. Um, I have a actually question for Mr. McBeth. Yes, uh, I think you were indicated you were at the Eureka County Cap. Yeah. Um, the recommendation is, uh, uh, I guess, not much of a recommendation. And I don't know if any of them are here today, but maybe you can explain their, uh, their statement that it needs to be adjusted down because I need, I guess I would need a little bit more than that. Yeah, um, 
that's why I didn't bring it up because I didn't know what number they really wanted to go to. I, I can tell you that the conversation that they had, is, um, you know, that portion of 155, it, a lot of that is in Eureka County. Um, um, they've always been hesitant really to, to comment on 15 too much um, in the past, but um, the with their conversations with sportsmen in Eureka County, um, they're they're pretty upset with um, the the doe hunt recommendations and also the amount of tags that's been given in the past few years in 15. Um, their main thing is that when they're hunting, they're just not seeing the deer at all right there, and um, and uh, so it's almost like they feel like we're going to be harvesting those that aren't really there in the first place because no one can find any deer. Um, and they um, they believe it's because of the amount of harvest that we've had. And, um, you know, I, I personally have talked to several people that are very frustrated with it as well. Um, but I also understand the, the range conditions and that mountain range is, is pretty close to the Robbers Creek and the Diamonds, and, and it just depends on the storms, how they come through. There half the diamonds get good moisture and the other half don't on certain years. And it can be a year to year uh, deal. I know we, we could have, we've had some super good storms the last couple weeks. I think it's gonna, our feed conditions are gonna be better in there, you know, early spring, summer. If we can get a couple more storms in, in uh, the end of May and first part of June, I think we'd be, I, I don't think we, we would have a, an issue at all. They really never threw a number out there, and so I, I didn't know where, how low, what what they wanted basically. Cody, yeah, I'd just like to address part of that with the the observations that you know the deer aren't there and that they're not seeing the deer. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I certainly can understand the uh, you know the worry on sportsmen's mind, and we we respect that. Um, we did count, you know, almost 1,500 deer. That was the second highest survey we've ever had on record in the 15 postseason this year. So that was our helicopter flight data. Um, we do recognize there's an issue with fawn ratio. This, you know, the past couple of years they've been down, um, but that's the exact reason that we're just, we're looking at bringing that population down is to get it, you know, back in line with what the habitat can support. We would welcome more uh, precipitation. Um, but the fact of the matter is that the BLM actually signed a drought EA uh, this year. Uh, um, you know, the moderate to severe in index on the U.S. drought and the, the forecast is not really any better. And so we really don't want to rely on hoping that we get spring moisture in your pot. Um, yeah, Area 15 is a huge unit. And I guess the doe harvest just unit 155, yeah, I, I don't think you counted. 1500 deer just in unit 155 and the little that I've been told about the collar data is really some of the deer that you collared in the Simpson parks are not really migrating they're kind of living in that range and that's just hearsay I, I haven't heard you know a fact from you guys at all on it but why how many deer did you count in, in 155 to uh, so where you could come up with the, with the doe harvest in 155. I, I don't have the number off the top of my head, but uh, we have been capturing in there for the, you know for three years in 155. Um, we see plenty of deer on the helicopter flights. The crew has you know no trouble finding deer to put collars on. The deer aren't totally resident; they are migratory. There's a mixed strategy in there. We have deer that we. have Documented actually migration we didn't know about over into the uh, North Toyabis, um, by the Cortez mine. <clears throat> Cortez, we have deer that have uh, migrated over to uh, Roberts Mountain. We also had deer that went uh, into a 16 and 17 Toyabis and monitors across Highway 50. But there is a big strategy there of the of the migratory deer. Um, if I could make, you know, I talked to you earlier about maybe seeing some of that reporting and stuff. Um, maybe sometime in the future, 
uh, in, in these areas where this type of work is being done, that maybe we could set a time at a, a cab meeting or something that we could actually go to that cab that this impact is, you know, within their area and, and go over some of this data and show them that, you know, where these are going. When the deer, when the deer, I think it's, it's me. It's the deer that are traveling that far. And, uh, um, and it might help um, educate why we have to do, why we're doing what we're doing. Okay. Yeah, I, I certainly uh, would not be opposed to that. I'd be happy to do that. I think that's a, a great idea. Um, you know, I don't have it in front of me, um, but you can look on our federal aid report, actually, uh, some, some other documents. But we have documented a pretty strong relationship between body condition and survival, both in adults. <coughs> um, you know, and I can't speak to the specifics on the Simpson Parks right now with the numbers, but we've observed that relationship in Area 15, Area 10, and Area 19 as well. So we've documented it. But I would be more than happy to present that at the CABS. Appropriate time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Joe brought up area 043 through 046 and talked about fawn survivability. From the discussion we just had, do you think survivability of those fawns would go up if we did remove some does? Yeah, that, so, I mean, point well taken um, on the survey conditions. However, if you look at kind of, kind of the longer term, perspective, if you look at a bigger view, that population is on an upward trajectory. And it may have, you know, it, it's actually on its way down now. Two or three years of poor recruitment and just drought conditions, um, you know, that, that really is what it's all about, is bringing it down in line with uh, the habitat conditions. Um, we've uh, harvested, if you look at area 10, which is our largest deer herd, We've actually harvested 1,600 does in the last four years. And we've had actually increasing fawn ratios, slightly increasing fawn ratios. We haven't put a dent in the, in the sustainable po population, of the adult doe population in Area 10. And we don't see any reason why this same concept wouldn't apply to you know, other areas, similar to the elk, similar to the pronghorn, similar to the big horn sheep. <clears throat> okay, Commissioner Bush. I, I, one more question, if I could. In Unit 155, um, what was your um, last year? I believe it showed there were 62 tags. And it doesn't have to be 155, just all of 15. What was the success rate of the, in the doe hunt? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't look that up. Yeah, it looks like it was. Uh, in, 152 is 47 and 155 is about 33. You know, so that's that's another thing to keep in mind on the quota. We're not really talking about you know 268 dead deer. We're really talking about half of that. So it is driven by the demand success formula that we have on our on our recommendations. That's why those are a little bit higher, you know, quite a bit higher than what they were in 2013. Okay. All right, any further questions? Okay. Anybody have a motion? <clears throat> Commissioner Bliss. Give her a shot. I move to approve the resident wheelchair antrobus and illegal weapon hunt eleven eighty one as recommended by the department with following changes. Over three to over six, fifty nine. 061064, 066, 068, 2800, 101, 102, 109, 2000. Second. Do we get a second? Okay. Commissioner Wallace seconded. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Bliss, second by Commissioner Wallace. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Nay. We have two nays, Drew and McNinch.
Okay, moving on. Resident Mule Deer Antler introduced any legal weapon. 1331. Okay, any questions? We'll go out to public comment. Glenn? Glenn Bunch, Mineral County Cap. And uh, last year, the department recommended 60, 60, and this year they're recommending 37. Uh, Mineral County would like it to go back to 60. We'd like to have the 60 quarter back, please. Rex Flowers, Washington County. Um, I just wanted to put it on record. We did, rec uh, we did uh, recognize and uh, wish to go with department recommendations. However, uh, we did have a large landowner in uh, Unit 011 through 013 and uh, 015 that, that, made, that asked us to make recommendation for a 50% reduction from the department's uh, recommended quotas. We, rec we want that recognized, but we did not support it based on the facts of looking at the last few years of uh, hunter success in that area. And taking into consideration that from 2011 to 2012, um, we changed our uh, ADH up there down to 30, which more than doubled our um, available tags. So I think this will be the third year and we're, we're kind of stepping down on the quota a little bit to reach where we need to be at. So we need to recognize that we need to give it one more year before we make any drastic changes. Thank you. Thank you. Brad. Brad Johnston, for the record. Uh, last year there were 53 tags in this uh, for uh, Unit 203. There's a proposal to reduce that by three this year, and it's a little unclear as to why, because the archery resident hunt for late season has a proposed increase of nine, which would then give more uh, tags than there was applications last year, and then there's a corresponding increase with the non-resident and illegal weapon and the archery non-resident hunt in that unit. So uh, I'd like to see Unit 203 stay at least what it was last year at 53, if not increased to 55 or more tags. I'd also note that in the in the big game book, there's mention of the Mason Valley deer herd. Uh, the, the, that herd's going to be hindered for a couple of reasons. One says future plans for a new copper mine in Mason Valley will convert more brush land and farmland into housing tracks within Mason Valley. Uh, I don't know where that's coming from because there's vacant lots from the last housing crash throughout Europe and so the notion that there's going to be some monumental housing development even if that copper mine goes I'm not aware of it no one's anticipating it uh, if it does great uh, as a homeowner in Urington but I don't expect it. Uh, there's also talking about conversion of farmland from alfalfa to monocultures of varying agricultural produce I suspect as directed at, at the company that I work for uh, but that's really uh, not completely accurate because as more acreage goes into onions, it's on a rotation with alfalfa, and our leafy greens program is really, uh, it's not really where the deer are along the Walker River corridor, so I don't think that these concerns should be driving down the tag numbers. They should be where they're at, where they were last year at 53, not reduced by three. Uh, and in fact, I would suggest that uh, we could take that any legal weapon resident hunt in Unit 203 up to 58. I'd also note that you know a lot of the specifics are given to uh, to Mason Valley only on this unit, but it's, it's it's actually much bigger than that. I believe 203 is Smith Valley as well. So, thank Brad, you. Brad, Brad, I got a question. Yes. Your county's recommendations. Oh, I'm speaking for myself. Okay. I'm not speaking. Right. I didn't. Uh, if I didn't make that clear, I apologize. This is Brad Johnston, Urington residence. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. All right. 
for the 1181 hunt, we did recommend some changes, or 1331, sorry. And only in area 10, for the same reason we did with the doe tags. They're counting the deer in landlocked areas on one side of the rubies. On the other side, we've got residents and everybody saying the deer population is lower. So we did recommend 101 through 109 early be reduced from 1543 to 1350, which would bring it in check with last year. 101 through 109 mid from 1404 to 1240, and 101 through 109 late from 309 down to 290, which would bring us back in check with last year's quotas. Under the same thing, with the hunters can't get these deer that they're counting on the Green Mountain because it's landlocked. You know, we got the Indians right there, and yeah, the deer are there for a reason because it's landlocked and we can't get it. So that's our recommendations there and why we did them. All right, thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. Beth. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking at the uh, report of the calves uh, for white pine, and on the first uh, first recommendation, it says recommended to increase tags in unit 011 to 013 uh, early to 298, and then it says reduce tags in 011 to 013 late to 16. Is that a typo? Should that be 11? One to one thirteen. It's not our typo. We believe it is a typo, but we could never really confirm by the time we caught it. That, okay, that but, that's, but, it, but it is coming from White Pine. Yeah. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that that's a, their typo. Okay. We were perplexed too. Anybody else? Commissioner McNish. Uh, or Cody, what the, the reference to, to deer being landlocked, um, what's the situation there? I, I don't remember ever talking about it before. Well, I mean, we do have, you know, access issues with the rubies uh, because there have, there's a, private, a lot of private land that, you know, surrounds the ruby mountain. <laughs> okay, it's not, it's not something new or special. It's just the same issue. That, I mean, that, that's been out there forever. So. Yeah, I mean... It's, it's a point well taken that there's access issues. However, from our perspective, we're trying to manage the deer population. We can't really manage the land. There are several public access points, albeit they do get uh, you know, crowded during the season, but there's, there's plenty of space in the Rubin Mountains. Having been up there myself to hike around to hunt in, it's just a matter of wanting to get there and get away from people. So I, I wouldn't say that the deer are necessarily landlocked, um, they may be harder to get to than some of the other areas that we have in Nevada, but the deer are there and they're, they're still harvestable. Okay, anybody else? Anybody got a support card we kept up to can make a motion? I just wanted to kind of touch base on uh, a phone call from uh, White Pine County on uh, basically on area 13. Um, and, and also, uh, you uh, made a comment on area 13 as well, that your county didn't really, they didn't want an increase over last year's uh, quota. They wanted last year's quota um, for the reason that they did acknowledge that the deer in that area are doing really well. Um, and they kind of wanted to leave it there, basically. Um, the conversation I had with the White Pine County chair was uh, that they also um, don't deny that the deer are doing well in um, in Area 13, um, but the, they're going off flight data uh, that was done this year. Um, there was 30, I think it was 36 per hundred does in, um, on that flight data, and I believe it was somewhere around. Four, three, four years ago, they were talking about some flight data that was it was 27 uh, bucks per 100 does. 
And um, so they didn't uh, deny that it doesn't deserve an increase, but the increase that is there now is, a, is basically a 30% increase. And um, they would like it to see, uh, would go uh, a 10% increase uh, over last year's tags for this year. Um, get that flight information next year, and then um, a court, and then that way you got two uh, flights under their belt, and if it needed to go up again from there, then then do so. But they're really reluctant to make that big of a jump in one year. Okay, Commissioner McGinch. So in area 202, 205, 208, Mineral uh, County's request to go from 37 to 60 is that where where are we at with that? Is that a problem? Uh, so I believe that was that's largely a you know a fact an artifact of the demand success equation that we used to calculate it. So it wasn't like we were uh, no biological problem. No biological, no. Okay. Anybody else? Commissioner McBeth. Well, you looked at me like you were ready to do something. So the, only, the only one I don't have my hands on, I know Rex came up to the podium, and I, uh, I'll be honest with you, I was writing, and I didn't uh, pick up what he said. So it was a recommendation there? Or was on? on which one? Rex. 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 I think his was to go along with the department recommendation. Okay. I think I've got them all down. I'll, uh, I'll uh, go ahead and take a stab at it. Um, I would uh, move uh, to approve... Resident Mule Deer Amber, any illegal weapon, 1331, as proposed by the department with the following uh, revisions. Uh, 101 to 109 early, uh, down from 1547 to 1350. Uh, 101 to 109 mid, down from 1404 to 1240. 101 to 109 late, down to 290, uh, 111 to 113 early, down from 545 to 298, 111 to 113 late, down from 60 to 16. Is that the right unit group? 131 to 134 early. Um, I'm going to go with White Pines mid-range over the same as last year at Eureka, and so that will be down from 333 to 281. 131 to 134 late, from down from 37 to 33. It's 141 to 145 early, down from 394 to 350. 181 to 184, down from 171 to 120. 195, from 23 to 20. 202, 205, 208, down uh, up from 37 to 60. 221 to 223 early, from 379 to 300. 221 to 223 mid. From 149 to 100. And 221 to 223 late from 27 to 21. We got a motion and a second. Motion by Commissioner McBeth, second by Commissioner Willis. Any further discussion? Commissioner McGinch. Uh, I, I, under, I understand. Um, reason for going through the list and uh, uh, considering the, uh, the cab's input and stuff on these, but, um, you know, I, I'm just struggling with it a little bit more this year. Um, you know, we're in the process of getting ourselves back on track, um, high buck ratios, uh, buck bill ratios, and, and uh, I feel like there's still correction going on, and, and uh, I'm just... I guess I'm just not as um, willing to go there as I have been. So 
uh, my tendency would be to support the department's recommendations and, and uh, uh, the, the two areas where I could, I could support change would be in 202, 205 through uh, 208, going from 37 to 60, and uh, 203 going from 50 to 53, because I just haven't heard any uh, significant biological reasons for these decreases, and, and uh, uh, you just, we've heard it a thousand times from the department, we just, I feel like there's a, the access issues um, goes beyond the biology, and uh, I guess if, if it was completely landlocked uh, in that sense, maybe we have a different deal, but uh, we would have a bigger problem than, than just this. So I'm not going to support the motion based on based on this. I tend to agree with uh, Commissioner McNinch. I appreciate the county's input, that, but some of these cuts are pretty significant. Yeah. I think we're going to. You know, we kind of work to try and work back towards that 30 buck per hundred dollar ratio, and we're kind of, it seems like in this motion, in a sense, throwing that away um, at the loss of opportunity for a lot of sports. So I don't think I'm completely comfortable adopting all these lock, stock, and barrel. Okay, Commissioner Hamm. I uh, agree with Commissioner McNinch 100% concerning because. Uh, Stop for the areas, three areas. I only three areas that I put in for, so I don't know how about feeling about it. But I'm, I'm going to support the departments again, again with their uh, recommendations. Yeah, and I'm, uh, one of the purposes upon which I'm going is, is that in, in our material that indicates that the, uh, the departments uh, 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 those that were set in prior in, in prior years with the goal to get down to two plus one. Uh, one hundred those was met, and so uh, I'm, a, I'm relying a little bit on uh, the caps, saying that you know there were some increases here again this year, and, uh, and you know, maybe this is going to dip it down below you know one hundred those. That's kind of where I'm going. I was just you know thinking that uh, hey, if we are at, at the uh, the objective, uh, Cody, you, you have a reply yeah. to that thirty buck per hundred bill comment? Um, not, not specifically on that one. I mean, that is our management objective. Uh, in Area 13, which is what uh, Commissioner Bliss uh, uh, was referring to earlier, where we had a survey in there, where we're at 36 per 100, a postseason objective. We hadn't flown in there for, for several years. <coughs> so that's where we're coming at with that. We really want to get it down. You know, if you guys go with something higher than, than 30, then that's fine, but that's... You know, we're, we're shooting for 30 for, for our management objectives. But I do want to clarify something on the White Pine County recommendation, the CAB recommendation. We're not entirely clear if it's, uh, and maybe Commissioner Bliss can help us out on this. Is it for 13, 131, 134, or 11? We feel it's 131 through 134 was there suggested unit group that was supposed to have a change to 298 early and 16 late. Because yeah, they have it listed as 011033, which is probably not the correct one. We'll let Ken Gray speak. <laughs> yeah, Ken Gray, Department of Wildlife for the record. Um, unfortunately, Elko lined up their cab meeting the same as White Pine. I was able to attend it. Having said that, I called the biologist and asked him if there was any significant changes uh, in, in Area 11, and he didn't indicate there was. He said it was pretty much uh, 13 was the only place that the White Pine uh, had made some changes. So I think I think that is an error there. Um, I guess what I would in Area 10 um, there is access issues, but we one I think one of the confusion where we're talking about the deer moving to the west side is that we when we fly our surveys. We find the deer on, on the Green Mountain Bench because they've migrated, but the color data and, and just general observation shows those deer are pretty, pretty uniformly spread out throughout that mountain range during the hunting season, and, and with some effort, uh, the access is there. And I, I don't know. I, I guess I just fear we went through the all the problems and, and fights with getting our buck ratios back down to 30 when we allowed them to creep up. From a biologist standpoint, I'm afraid uh, if, if we continue to go down this line, Two or three years from now, we'll have the same problems. We'll be coming back in here and taking huge cuts to get back down to 30 bucks per uh, hundred dollars. So thank you. Okay, Commissioner Billis. As far as 
I'm sure it is. Uh, it was what they recommended was a 10% increase in tags in there, in from 131 to 134 over last year's quota. Yeah, that's what I'm sure that 298 is. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're admitting that yeah, they, they said we don't argue that they are doing really well there, and and they're not. Um, they're doing really well actually. And, uh, <coughs> but the thing about Area 13 is it's got phenomenal sun range. It's got some phenomenal winter range. And, you know, I feel <clears throat> that that area can handle um, the, the, I mean, I, last year I seen uh, uh, those with triplets. I haven't seen those with triplets in years. A um, lot of twins, you know, in the in, uh, last couple of years. And, and so that tells me that the range conditions are good and, um, and that they can handle it. And, you know, I, I just, I support White Pine County's uh, recommendation in this. And, and um, let's see what the data comes back next year. And if it shows that, you know, we still get 30% of the goal over a period of time instead of one giant step, I guess we're wrong. Okay, it's a lot more flight. Okay. Yeah, just to answer uh, uh, Mr. Drew, uh, Drew's uh, question, uh, in our document, uh, Explanation of Mendel's 2014 Big Game Quarter Recommendations on the there, uh, where I got that from was, uh, it says 2013 statewide hunter success for all deer hunters was nearly 44%, which resulted in a harvest of 8,230 8, bucks. The 2013 harvest level resulted in an observed post-CD buck ratio of 30 bucks to 100 does statewide, which meets New Dow's management objectives. And that's where I got that stuff. Okay. And the quotas that were developed are basically developed per unit to achieve a post-season buck ratio of 30. That's correct. So by reducing those, essentially what we would expect is in those areas where we reduced, to that, that buck ratio to start increase. The disconnect there is that the models, uh, at the time that we're doing those surveys and measure those post-season ratios, aren't including recruitment from the previous year's spawn crop. So we have a, that fall ratio, but then we recruit those animals into the population, and so that buck ratio goes up based on the survival in the spring. So now, even though we got there last year to 30, we're at 36, 37, whatever that recruitment was in those areas. Okay, we still have a motion to second. Door, so do we have any further discussion? Seeing none, I'm going to call for the vote. Oh, further discussion, Commissioner Wallace. Mr. Chairman, I, I hate to interrupt, but I think uh, Mike has come up with the 298.16, which the motion includes is in 111 to 113. And they are questioning whether that should be 131 to 134. Correct. Is that correct? That's yeah, this, it would make a big difference, obviously, Huge. on your uh, motion. Yes. So, okay, we have a motion and a second. Do you want to amend your motion to reflect okay, the so, changes? So, so you're saying that the 111 to 113 should stay that, uh, as as recommended? We're, we're so confident that White Pine County has never made an alternative recommendation for trade 11. Okay. So I'll, I've, I've struck that, and you're saying that that actually goes to 131. 131. So instead of. Okay. So Thank you. 298 and 16. Yes. Okay. I would accept those changes. That's my intent. Okay. So now we have a clear motion on the floor. Everybody understand the motion? <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, we're all good. Okay, I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yeah. Aye. aye. Okay, motion failed. Two ayes for Macbeth and Bliss. Okay, so anybody have a motion? Commissioner Drew? I think, I think you owed me that one from like five meetings ago. <laughs> 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 
So I would make a motion for uh, to approve resident mule deer antler to any legal weapon hunt 1331 as presented by the department with the following changes. For units 101 to 109 early, quota of 1400. For 101 to 109 mid, 1240. 101 to 109 late, 300. Uh, 111 through 113 early and late would remain the same. 131 to 134 early would be 300. Late would be 30. 141 to 145 early would be 355. Late would be 45. 195 would be 20. 202, 205 to 208 would be 60. 221 to 223 early would be 325. Mid would be 125. And late would remain the same. Second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passed unanimous. Make a Cody or earn his money right out of the box. You're finding humor in that. <laughs> I always wanted to share the wealth. <laughs> share the wealth. to six is what we had last year was six. We'd like to go back. <coughs> Commissioner Bliss, I'm assuming the same reasoning on 13 and 14 from Eureka County from their recommendations. Yes. Before you, before you make your motion, <laughs> Commissioner Drew, I mean, we're, we're talking on one of these, uh, you know, part part of a, an animal probably, and uh, on the other one, I don't know, maybe it's a difference between one or two. I, So to make this easy, um, I would move that we adopt resident mule deer antlered muzzleloader hunt 1371 as presented by the department, with the exception of unit 202, 205 to 208, going from four to six. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Drew, second by Commissioner Young. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passed unanimous. Okay, moving on to resident mule deer antler, longbow archery, 1341. Any questions from the commission? So 
For the record, Deb Martin, Carson Cab. Um, although yes, uh, yeah, yeah. 17 is not in uh, Carson City by a long shot, there are a lot of residents in Carson City that do hunt in that area. And we noticed that the recommendation was to reduce the archery hunt by approximately 100, um, whereas um, that was quite a high percentage versus the percentage reduction in the uh, any uh, legal weapon hunt. And although it is undersubscribed at the beginning, we note that there is a lot of um, um, archers or rifle hunters in um, Carson City and archers that look at that as a um, second choice in the second round. So based on that, we recommend rather than reducing that by 100, by reducing it by approximately 45. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Any other public comment? Sean? Uh, Sean Shea, Washoe Cab. Um, we actually got a letter from a Washoe um, resident about the same unit, about why there was a 52% drop in archery tag in unit 17. And um, um, actually, I'd have to agree with Carson City that it should go up. It's, you know, it's a demand success thing, but they're only signing on the first tag. Yeah. 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 So um, I think we were good with going with Carson City had to. So. Okay, Kevin. Kevin Strozzi, Matt County Advisory Board. Uh, we didn't have any discussion on this on this archery hunt. Um, we didn't recommend any changes. We didn't really discuss it. It was reduced due to demand success. It's usually undersubscribed. It's undersubscribed because it's mostly wilderness. There's not much access. Uh, I just wanted to get up though. I spoke to both the gentlemen that were up here before me, uh, you know, on the side. I don't. Um, personally have any aversion to raising those tags up to increase hunter opportunity. Uh, the only thing I will say is that we get a lot of guys that do, you know, put in for that hunt as a second hunt, never been there before. And those guys, then they start calling because they're upset because they spent, you know, six days over there and never saw a deer. It's a tough place to hunt if you haven't hunted it, you know, if you don't know the area. So anyways, that's all I got. Corey. For the record, Corey, Lincoln Cab. For uh, 231, we were looking at uh, the increase there from uh, up to 55. I think it's a victim of demand success. Last year, the success there was kind of low, and in the past year, it's kind of hovered around 40 or 45 to 50%. So we, we wanted to bump that down a little bit, go from 55 back down to 40. Historically, it's always hovered around 30. So we just kind of back that off. Okay, thank you. Any other public comment? Mr. Dixon. For the record, Paul Dixon, Clark County. Um, just to point out what the what Corey just talked about of the art, uh, archery longbow hunt. Since a lot of people in Clark County hunt in that region, uh, so we followed their arguments for why they wanted to change, make the change, and we supported the change. For both of our, uh, Thanks. Okay, any other public comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. Ready again, Mr. Drew? Move to approve President Mule Deer Antler Longbow Archery Hunt 1341 with the following changes uh, Unit Group 171 to 173, going from 89 to 150 and Unit 231 going from 55 to 40. Second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All the opposed? Motion passed unanimous. Okay, moving on. Non-resident mule deer antler, any legal weapon on 1331. Okay, for sake of time, and uh, not much changes. To, is there anybody have an appetite to get through all the non-resident one motion? So can 
we look at them all, and if we have public comment on any of the non-resident, we can make it. If not, we'll get through with one swell swoop. Any public comment? On Elko County Board, all we, on our recommendations that we sent in, we just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that adjust the, the resident numbers so that we made our 10%. Okay, thank you. Any other public comment? Similar, Corey Ladd, Lincoln Cab, but we, on the archery non-resident, we wanted to sneak 231 from six down to four and hopefully still stay 10%. Okay, anybody else? Seeing now, we'll bring it back to the commission. Any further discussion? I do not have motion on your commissioner, Drew. <laughs> so, Mike, it seems like last year what we did on this, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that we basically said on anything we changed in the resident to basically adjust the non-resident to meet the 10% criteria in one motion. Okay. And we'll make sure it happens. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this, and then you can correct me when I get it wrong. So I would make a motion to approve the <coughs> non-resident mule deer antlered any legal weapon hunts 1331. Non-resident mule deer antlered muzzleloader hunt 1371. And non-resident mule deer antlered longbow archery hunt 1341. As presented by the department, uh, with the exception of adjusting those companion units for resident to meet the 10% requirement. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Drew, a second by Commissioner McMahon, change for the discussion. I think the only piece that I missed on that, and we can pull it in as an amendment if we want, because I missed Corey's recommendation, but I think yeah. it was actually matched with 10%. It was matched. Yeah, it was accurate. Mike, does that, did that get it right? Okay. Everybody clear on the motion? Okay, I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All the opposed? Okay, uh, non resident, non resident, non resident deer and antelope, uh, landowner compensation tags. Uh, 11, 15, 12, 15, 21, 15, and 22, 22, 15. Yeah, so I'll, I'll finish this so that uh, everything is linked. So everything that you just changed, uh, except for the minor increases in non-residents. Um, I mean, decreases. You're, you're looking at 400 as one and a half percent of the total of the pronghorn and deer tags, which would be the maximum number of landowner compensation tags that we could issue this 2014. So, so I guess without having those final non-resident quotas, you could make a similar motion as you did for non-residents that uh, you, you would like to see the Result of the one and a half percent, including the non-resident uh, corrections that, that involve that ten percent that that we will do on the computer come Monday. If if you like that full one hundred one and a half percent is the maximum by state law that you can provide for the landowner compensation tag. Okay, everybody understand that. Any public comment before we go on? Real quick. Uh, for the for future, I realize we're setting what we can give as a maximum amount of land over tax right now. But for 2013, there was a, a question asked of us at my cab is is where did the land over tags get distributed in 2013? What units? So I mean. You can kind of roughly assume it's going to be where you've had the larger herd, but there were a lot of questions when you're going through and looking at stuff. It would be nice to know where land orders are being compensated. And so next year, of that 402 you have, how you distribute that would be nice to know before we come to this quota set of meeting. Thank you. 
Page A6 of the status book. What's that? A, page A6, A6 of the status book. A6. All right. I'll look. Thank you. Any other public comment? Here we go. Seeing now, I'll bring it back to the commission for a motion. For a mask. Move to approve resident and non resident deer and antelope landowner compensation tags, either six cents, 11 15, 12 15, 21 15, and 22 15, as presented by the department. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Commissioner Beth. Um, I, I'm thinking we need to make the language that adjusts it um, you know, for the uh, uh, in other words, we have an adjustment that is now 1.5% for 402. That does not include uh, the adjustment. Uh, so you need to make the same motion as you did uh, for the, all of the non-resident hunts. Uh, a similar motion that adjusts that number by uh, the 10% um, change in the non-resident tags that haven't been taken into account. Okay, so I'm willing to accept that as an amendment. As an amendment? Okay. If, you could state, yeah. if, if you could state it. Did you understand it? I, if you could understand it. If you could state that clearly for our recording secretary, <laughs> I would accept that as a friendly amendment. Okay, the second still good with that? Still good. Okay. The second is Commissioner Moore, and he's still good. Excuse me, you? Yeah, and I'll okay. listen to it. Okay, I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Most passionate animals.